Hi, and welcome. Thank you for joining me on today's session. And I thought I'd talk today about knob swinging and what it means and um, basically what it is and why you should avoid it. And this relates to in this particular case to Indian clubs only. And I'll give you some demonstrations of physically what it does to you, or what it should I say, what it doesn't to you, and as opposed to a correct swing that actually exercises you properly. But I wanted to go back um, a little bit in time just to start off with and talk about you know the Industrial Revolution that came along in the 1850s, mid 18th century, sorry, 19th century, and um, people went from working on farms into cities because they could earn more money, which is totally understandable. And this happened in Europe, in the States, everywhere. And, um, but the, the product of that was that people went into sedentary lifestyles. That means that people were sat in offices, not moving around much. People were stood at machines, you know, like whatever, pulling a lever, whatever. It was just really boring, boring work. And Indian clubs came into the fore with um, people like Professor Harrison in the UK, who was noted, no, um, uh, he was declared the strongest man in the UK um, by Queen Victoria, and she sort of applauded his um, prowess with clubs. And he's from some really big clubs. And Simdi Kehoe has to have a mention here because he saw Harrison in 19, 1861 and went to the States. And basically, um, you know, going back a bit, sedentary lifestyle. And it made me think of a thing, um, uh, when I used to go to school in the sort of, um, you know, 1960s, so it shows you how old I am, um, I used to have to catch the train. And just to sort of give you a sort of thing, you know, people would be sort of stood there reading papers and stuff. And, you know, you'd, you'd leaf through the paper, you'd fold it up, you'd have a look at it, leave it, you know, read a little bit more, open it up again, move the page. Now what happens? I was at a train station the other day, and I can't demonstrate this with my phone because you're watching me on my phone. I've got a little target. So what are people doing now? And they head down like this. Everybody at a train station is like this. Now to me, why am I telling you this? Because knob swinging is this. It's thumb exercise. That's all it is. It's not club swinging proper. And some, I mean, some people call it twirling, that's fine. Um, it's great if it's used within a routine, but there's a lot of people right now on the internet starting to use it, and it's incredibly lazy, not beneficial. So I'll put that down. So what I, th what I thought would um, just sort of briefly discuss is this. And before I go any further, hi, if anybody new has joined me, um, we're talking about knob swinging. My name is Paul Volkovinsky, and welcome to this session. So let's just take one club and talk about basically what should and shouldn't happen. So basically, the um, you should be looking. There are five grips in Indian club work. There's the hammer grip, saber grip, ring grip. Um, and the claw grip or the ball and socket grip and finally the um, snake grip but we won't even go into the snake grip right now and um, basically you um, you lengthen and shorten the club so for instance um, you and you change grips all the time and I just wanted to give you an, an example of what happens in the standard heart-shaped swing so the heart-shaped swing comes down here, so it's describing the large circle at the front of the body. As the biceps is touching the rib cage here, the, the pivot point changes from the shoulder to the elbow. The club comes up. Now here, I'm still holding the, the saber grip. Now, it's like a windscreen wipe. It crosses my face. My elbow lifts forward, so the elbow is sagittal, and the club drops down behind my neck, and then my arm opens out completely into the frontal plane. Now here, watch my hand, it's still hammer grip, saber grip. Now to add to that, 
as we come back down here, as it comes down to the back, you've got a split second where the hand is in the ring grip. So basically the club is being held between the thumb and the forefinger. And this is this section of the hand here is called the pericule, so you know what I'm talking about. So it's between the thumb and the forefinger. So there's that position here. And it's a very, very good grip to, to come to terms with. Now, so in a standard heart-shaped swing, there are three grips that you go through to the motion. And just to give you a demonstration now, um, we'll just do four, four swings. So this is the Y position. So one, two, and I'll do them nice and slow. And we're looking for elevation here, as high as possible, which is really important, and you'll see why in a second. And three grips. So the elbow's sagittal here, round to the back, frontal plane, and coming through. Okay, so I'll just do a few more swings, and now I'm going to switch into basically knob swinging. So I'm just going to make sure that you can see, I mean, save a grip and a grip. Remember those two. Now, knob swinging. Watch what happens here. I'm losing height for a kickoff. I'm just holding the club by the pommel. Just for anybody who doesn't know, the ball at the end is the pommel. This comes from sword, from the sword, basically. So, and now, basically, I want to show you um, the heart shape done properly. So there it is there. And now, the knob swing. Now, other things that you can look for. Um, the, the, proper, the, the heart shape proper basically makes full use of the range of motion of your shoulder. So basically here, and I'm pushing up, okay. Because now, and also notice here, as the clubs are crossing behind my head, I mean, they're crossing around about here. So if I go quickly, you can see roughly where, where they're, they're coming to. But if I go into not swinging, you can see that that point is here. So my shoulders aren't lifting because I've got to swing my arms out earlier just to sort of um, allow the clubs to, to rotate at the back. It's a very smooth swing, ball and socket, of course it's going to work, but it's wrong and it's not giving you any benefit. Now a very good, a very good example of this is if I go into now, some people call this twirling. I don't think it's called it. It's twirling in the sense if it's done properly. And what I'm talking about is here. If we do um, inward back circles, and an inward back circle, and we're just going to do it with one arm to start with, has to start, elbow and the, um, the, the upper arm should be parallel with the floor. That's the first thing. As the club comes down to the back, Elbow comes forward, the club straightens, so it should look like this. You can see it very, very slowly. I'll just come forward a bit to the camera, so there we go. So now, there's the full, full movement. So I'll do it with both clubs. So you can see, look, elbows are coming into the center. Okay. Now, just to give you an idea, if I knob swing this movement, I can keep my arms out here, and, and this, is, this is twirling. This is what I call twirling. So, it gives you a pretty good example. So there's no, you know, where that movement's gone. That movement's gone. So I don't remember any of you watched from last week. Um, I was talking about the, the, the movement with a warm up. You know, if you have your thumb here, if you turn your uh, elbow forward, sagittal, thumb points outwards. Frontal, the thumb points inwards. And that can be used both in the inward swing, 
So there's the inward swing. Okay. And then the outward swing, also the same thing. So the elbow should come right across the body. Okay. So, and, but, but I'm going to say very quickly, there are um, very good uses for a knob swing. And now I'm just going to talk about the actual proper grip for a knob swing. The, the, the knob swing is basically um, the club draw in, the club, I'm going to have to use two hands here, the club goes into this position here with the thumb lying across the club, the other fingers are around the pommel. There's the back circle. So now there's the ring grip, and then the back circle comes through. But what you can do with this is, is you can do a figure of eight. So you can drop it forward, move the thumb across here, and then you have a figure of eight. So if I do it towards the camera, you can see there's the figure of eight. So thumb is crossing over, swinging up, crossing back over. Now, to my mind, you know, doing, and I mean, this, this sort of movement gets done in what's called a reel, so that's a reel here. It should be used with an open arm movement. So consequently, a, you should be doing a combination. So it's the agility of your arms and your quick arm changing. So one, two, one, two, one, and up. Straighten the arms, they come down, and now you're thinking about changing direction and up again. So now the, the mental thing comes in because you've got to control every single one of those movements to avoid hitting yourself and so on. And um, I think that's something that's really worth um, mentioning here is, I mean, you, you, you're working then on mental agility and um, physical. So, I mean, you're working on opening your arm out, closing your arm, and so on. Now, I just there's a few other things I wanted to point out. I just will go through the grips very quickly. So the grip, hammer grip, is like this, basically. The saber grip means that the club lies down like that. Saber grip, which we use for the full circle here. Okay, then that goes into the hammer grip, back circle, and back into the um, saber grip. So that's the, that's the, you know, those two, and just with the saber grip, as the club comes down, basically you should never ever put your fingers down the club here. They should always lie across, and, and nor the thumb for that matter. Never down the club. Um, now, going into the ring grip. The ring grip basically means that the, the, the club is rotated at this point here. You're actually shortening the club. So there's the ring grip here. And you can see how I'm holding it here. It's between the pericule, between the thumb and the forefinger. And then the fingers come forward. So there's pressure off the thumb, pulling the club back up again. So on a straight arm, it should look like that. So you can see I'm opening, closing, opening and catching, in fact, opening, catch, open, catch. So it's this type of movement. And, you know, with club swinging proper, you should be changing your grips all the time. And it's something that you cannot see on the video. Um, there is a few well-known companies who are who have basically got some adverts, which always makes me laugh because they stood there like this. That is not that is not a club grip at all, because the grip should be on the pommel here, or sabre or hammer there, not sort of halfway down the club. Now, going back to the length thing, just also consider this: that when the club is in its um, with a straight arm. The club length is not just here, not the 20 inches of this club, it's a full length from the pivot point on my shoulder here. So it doesn't matter which way the club goes, that's the full length. If we then shorten it to the back circle, the back circle basically uses the end of the club 
right, with your hand resting against the pommel, the club is a slightly different length here. And then if we go into a circle here, the club is really choked because it's just rotating through my fingers here. So again, this, um, you know, there's a lot of dexterity involved, which means that your forearm is working all the time, and it should be done in coordination with the circles that you do. So the pommel, the pommel now, just talking about that a bit, is um, to my way of thinking, it's a lazy swing, there are no grip changes because I mean I can do I can go from a, with a pommel um, with a sorry uh, knob swing. There's my knob swing there. I can swing through here. Okay, and I haven't changed grip once, not once. And in fact, the pommel basically I'm holding the pommel like that, so I'm not even moving my thumb backwards and forwards across the handle of the club. Now, so I mean. It's uh, the, um, the proper grips are amazing for your hand health because I mean, as you get older, I'm going to turn 67 in January. You know, I want my hands to be really nice and, you know, move and everything else. And, you know, obviously sort of stay off things like arthritis. If I'm lucky enough not to get it, well, great. But I mean, some people are. And, I, and I've got to give a shout out to, um, to um, Zen Kahuna. He did a, he did a video quite some time ago when he had his earlier um, channel, and some of you may remember this, and he was holding a, um, a, uh, um, a teardrop club, and he was just rotating the handle like this. I mean, which I think is, I mean, it's really important for somebody who, for instance, has got a bit of sort of like, you know, problems in their knuckles and stuff. I mean, that's a great movement, and you can do it sort of one way and then you can turn it around and do it another way. So a shout out to Zen Kahuna because I thought that was one of the you know, very brilliant observations. Now, I also want to bring up um, Harry Alec because there's some confusion here. Harry Alec is um, a, you know, an absolute master of what's called fancy club swimming. And he uses small clubs and I'll just swap mine over. And I can't really do it as well as he can. But I'm just going to talk about it for a minute. So Harry, Harry for instance, for his, um, he uses a light, fairly lightweight top, he calls these a scepter or a, a teardrop, and when he does a movement, he drops the club forward and back. So you can see there's a complete type of wrist movement here. So, you know, the, the wrists are really, I'm not really doing it much credit. I mean, if you watch one of Harry's um, videos, he does it really well and it's worth a look. So, I mean, that's something else that you should have a look at. So, it's, it's you know, obviously work with a very much lighter club, but the, the movement is still there and it's not lazy, like knob swing. I mean, just some sort of background information. Also, um, people like Tom Burrows, who's one of my absolute club swing heroes, he was the guy who um, did the 100 hour swing in order shot in 1913 under military and medical supervision. He basically, um, his comments about um, knob swinging even in those days, you know, in the, in the context of sedentary, everything was sedentary, that it was completely a useless exercise because you're literally just twirling the clubs. And I want to draw a distinction between twirling and making small wrist circles because I think there's a huge difference. And if you're doing your hand grips properly, then, um, you know, it's, and mixing them up, that's the most important thing. So you're doing a big sweep and a small circle. So a big sweep and a small circle. So just to give you a couple of ideas, just on the, um, the standard heart-shaped swing, if we go one, two, one, Two. Now on three, if we add in a straight arm circle here, so one, so pardon me, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. more elevation, one, two, now the same applies to um, parallel swings. Parallel swings, if you consider that it's a heart-shaped swing, but both clubs are going in the same direction. Now watch my hand here. It comes here and up. 
here and up. So a parallel swing, proper, should look like this. So we swing through, one, two, one, two, one, two, and I'll go the opposite way. One, two, one, two, one, two. Full range of motion. Now I'm not swinging, so watch how it happens now. I'm having to keep my arms fairly low because the, the clubs are turning and they're accelerating much more quickly. Which was again going back to last week, similar sort of thing that happens when you swing a mace from your chest as opposed to from your belly button. Same sort of thing, the club is actually accelerating. So as the club is coming around, here, there's the acceleration here because you're bringing it through. But if I swing and get elevation and have a proper grip on the club, I'm controlling the speed, not the club is controlling me. So that's what I want to do. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's um, explaining it. Now, going to um, calisthenics, because calisthenics is a different beast. Um, and I've watched some of the, um, the old Soviet videos of girls doing calisthenics. And I mean, their work is basically, you know, they're, they're doing this type of thing, and a lot of it is not swinging, but they're basically doing it for effect, and it's part of a show, and they're doing tumbling and everything else. So consequently, and they're also throwing the, 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 the you know, the clubs are being thrown up in pairs, or they're throwing them individually and catching them and all this sort of thing. So I think in that sort of situation, knob swinging can be used very effectively, but not so much in club swinging proper, where you do want to get that full range of motion. And I mean, that's basically what we're talking about. So, and try to draw the, draw the distinction. So, now the clubs I've been just using up to now were two pounders. These are two and a half pounders. So the exercise I was showing you earlier on, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I think basically it has to be said that Indian club swing is not necessarily fast. I've got a beat here that's going at 60 beats a minute. Um, and I can follow the beat. see that I'm opening my hand every time when the clubs are doing the straight arm wrist circle. Okay, but you can slide down too. Make sure that you do it correctly. Do it in front of a mirror so you can see what you're doing. So, I hope that helps you. I mean, I'd love to hear any comments on what you've got to say about it. If you disagree with me or you agree with me, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I just, I mean, if you're new to Indian club swinging, go to IndianClubsAcademy.com. I've got a six, seven video um, uh, beginners course, which basically takes you through the correct grips, the correct movements and so on for one club only. And I'll, um, following last week's debacle on um, YouTube, and I don't know, uh, sorry, pardon me, um, Facebook, Recorded the video, went live, and then I got a little message from Facebook saying, oh, your, your um, video is now playing at full resolution, and then cut me off, like here and here, so that you can't actually see the, the swing of the mace. And, you know, I've got two great curtains either side of the video. So I'll post this video up on um, YouTube, and then a link onto Facebook so you can see it from there. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next week. And if you have any questions or anything that you'd like me to talk about, please let me know because I'm more than happy to. I have I had one inquiry which I'm working on at the moment about um, changing um, uh, body weight positions when you swing a meal, which I'll look, I'm looking at doing next week. So if you have any meal questions, I'll try and answer them in the process. So for next week, it'll be a, a session on Persian meals. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching. Please remember to leave a comment. Bye for now.